So I guess to begin with, tell me a little bit about how long you've been doing this for. As in like working at the, you know, at the college and, you know, teaching classes here. This is my 12th year um, of doing this, working in this building. Um, so it's been a, yeah, 12, 12 long years. Uh, good years. Um, programs growing um, continually. Uh, we're up for a new building, hopefully, so um, we got nowhere to go but up. Cool. So, now, you, you mentioned that the program was going. Do you think that's more because of, uh, you know, a growing interest in the culinary arts or a growing interest in the college or maybe a little bit of both? Or? I think it's a little bit of both, um, but there's just such a huge demand for cooks out there that people find a job as a cook and then realize that maybe I should go to school for this. So um, I think that's where a lot of it comes from. And a lot of them, it's just what they like to do. So like they grew up cooking up with mom and dad or their family owns a restaurant or yeah. something like that. So um, Now, is cooking in Wyoming kind of different from like, you know, cooking elsewhere? Because I, I know that, you know, like I was looking over your menu and I saw seafood items and that kind of like, you know, like anytime I see seafood items out here, it kind of blows my mind just a little bit to think that, you know, like, like, wow, you know, like uh, you get to play around with, you know, all types of different ingredients. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, grown here. So is it, uh, you know, are there any restraints to cooking here or are there any benefits to cooking here or... Well, there's, the restraints are more than the benefits. Well, no, I wouldn't say more, but uh, it's hard. We're landlocked, so seafood is something that we have to deal with to get flown in. Um, but we live in meat and potatoes um, country, so uh, what we offer through our program is they get to come down and sample something that they can't normally get um, in Wyoming. So, cool. Um, we have our little niche in Sheridan um, with our restaurant and we're able to do seafood and things that aren't that common around Sheridan. I mean, it's, since I moved, I moved back 18 years ago and um, the food scene has changed a lot. It's gotten better. When I first came back it was seriously meat and potatoes. Um, and you've seen a lot of progression. Uh, in Sheridan food wise in the, around the country, the whole farm to table movement and the local farmers market and all of that. So, yeah, uh, tell me a little bit about the farm to table movement because I mean, like, that's something that my boss is really interested in. He kind of, you know, uh, yeah, you know, it's all about trying to use local uh, farms and ranches um, and serving their um, products because now it's well, uh, Wyoming passed a law, I think, two years ago allowing. Um, they will sell directly to the consumer. Um, so that has broadened people's horizons and scope of, of what can be offered to them from local purveyors because a lot of times it wasn't, it was very small when I came back and now it's, well, we have a farmer's market every Thursday. Yeah. And you can get so much there. Um, we don't buy as much as we would like to from local purveyors just because one due to the expense and the other is that we buy in very large bulk quantities. Um, so it's hard. We get some goats from a local uh, rancher um, that we butcher up in our meat fabrication class. So we like to do that. We teach our students about that. It's just kind of hard it's going to come as um, that whole movement continues to move um, just hasn't been able to get to us yet <laughs> yeah I understand um, but we would like to use it more and um, just we don't have a very big budget and we have a lot of students so now you mentioned that the program kind of helps broaden the students' horizons a little bit in terms of cooking, like you guys fly in, you know, seafood and whatnot. Um, but are there like other examples of how you kind of, uh, you know, help students play around with something that maybe they've never really gotten to play around with before? 
Sure. You know, we have um, machines that are um, up and coming with things like we have an anti-griddle, which is actually a griddle is hot, but an anti-griddle is obviously extremely cold. You can do uh, dessert sauces on it and um, things. Um, and we play with dehydrating food. We have a, a piece of equipment called a Paco Jet, which is um, can do ice creams or mousselines or broccoli puree in it. Um, so we get to play around with, with a lot of stuff. Not a lot of the high-end stuff like caviar and, and goose liver and all of that, but um, I think just going through our program, because we do just so much different things that are not local to Wyoming. Like we do a Moroccan lamb or goat stew and um, things like that. So they just we teach them a classical French background, um, which you don't normally see in Wyoming. But you don't have to cook just French food. You apply those techniques to American cuisine. Because we have a North American class where we cook North American food, but we apply all the techniques they learned um, to uh, that American food. So it just elevates that American food a little bit because of the techniques they know behind it. Cool. Now, I, you know, going off of what you said about North American cuisine, you know, I also noticed that you guys had a class on that, and I was just wondering, like, what is North American cuisine? Is that like Mexican food, or is it? Uh... Well, you got the whole. You've got like the Atlantic Northeast, New England type food with craft oils and New England clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder. And then you got the southern states with grits and black eyed peas and um, stuff like that. And then you got Tex Mex, you got Southwestern, and you have California cuisine, which is a lighter, a lot more seafood. And then Pacific Northwest, heavy in seafood. So we actually have a very diverse um, range of foods in the United States because we're all, we're all immigrants. So they, we brought it from the whole world. So we're, we've got it everywhere. That's cool. Like, I wasn't even thinking about like grits and whatnot. So I mean, you know, that's yeah. uh, yeah, kind of escaped my mind. So that's cool. Um, gosh, there was something else I wanted to ask you that was kind of going along those lines too. Oh yeah, you you mentioned that you you know you kind of uh, you know show a lot of students you know like French cooking and you know. Um, they really develop like a heavy, you know, background in, in you know, French foods. Um, is that kind of what you uh, were taught at the, the Culinary Institute of America, or you know, I guess um, you know, what things have you taken from from there that kind of uh, you know you're able to play around with here and kind of you know show the students about here? Tim and I both went to the CIA, so we based our program on what we went through. So we tried to make our students do what we had to do to go through those things and get that background that we had because once you complete our program we're small and not on a lot of people's radar but we can send our students anyway because of the background the education that we give them uh, we have one student at disney world right now we've sent we have a couple of kids in south carolina we had one student work at uh, Mile High Stadium, another girl, she went to Italy. Yeah, I saw that. Um, so um, we've sent them anywhere. Once they complete here, they can go anywhere. A lot of them stay local and go back to their hometown and help out with a family friend at their family's restaurant. But once they're done here, they can pretty much go anywhere they want to. Cool. And have they, have they kind of like kept in touch with you guys and, you know, told you about like what they're cooking, you know, over there? and. Um, you know, a lot of you keep in touch or we hear from, they keep in touch with other students who keep in touch with us, so cool. it all comes back through our alumni grapevine. We have an alumni Facebook page and other ways for them to contact us, awesome. so yeah, we try to keep track of where they're at so we can let people know um, what they can do with themselves once they get out of our program. Cool. Would it be possible for you to put me in touch with any of them, just to you know, kind of get a student perspective and? 
Yeah, we can try to give you some numbers. Cool. So if I have your awesome. email, so uh, maybe Chef Tim and I will try to come up with a few of those names to get to you. Awesome. Uh, Appreciate that. Yeah, no, I don't think that should be a problem. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, look over my, my list of questions really quick, uh, just to make sure that I'm getting everything I wanted to. Oh yeah, so you guys have four practicums, and I'm, I'm guessing, you know, working here is probably one of the practicums, right? Or is it all four, or are they well, the, different? Or? The practicums are um, one, two, and three. What's required of those is they have to work 37.5 hours in a job. Um, or they volunteer for us because we do some catering events. Um, like we did a, an event at the Wild Theater when they had their grand opening for the new Hallmark side of it. Um, so that counts toward those practicum hours. Uh, practicum four, they, we open in the summer, Monday through Friday. Um, and then they get their practicum hours while they're here in the summertime. And then the summertime we just do simple American cuisine um, for lunch. But yeah, we try to get them out there into the industry, you know, and a lot of them, um, they're not working, you know, they're practicums or, we do have students for practicums, um, and we have one at Birch, uh, a lot of them just, they go to Jimmy John's or, you know, they go work just where they, they they're more apt to work with their student hours, um, so that's where they pick up their practicum hours. Okay. Now you mentioned that you guys had relationships with, uh, or rather on your webpage you mentioned that you, you guys have relationships with, uh, you know, different restaurants and, and you kind of, you know, uh, hinted that a little bit. Um, like what, what restaurants do you guys have really strong relationships with and kind of, you know, have continued to, uh, um, you know, send students to, I guess? Well, we, we work with Powderhorn, Frackletons, um, uh, Peel News. Uh, we know all those people, and they, they'll call us. Um, people just know that we're here and call us cool. out of the blue. So um, our job board is usually pretty full of people who would like us. Like um, Cottonwood Kitchen has approached us to try to help them. Um, the, the Italian store that's on Grinnell Plaza, uh, I can't think of the name of that. They've approached us to get them to help with their instructors, their people to teach their classes. Um, so a lot of times people in the community just know we're here and they reach out to us. Um, but we have good relationships with most we put people in the Big One Smokehouse, uh, just about Cowboy Cafe, we've had students there. Um, so we pretty much, any place that gets a hold of us, we try to find them someone to work. If our students yeah. are able to work. That's cool that they reach out to you, though. I mean, you know, it kind of shows that, you know, you're kind of like a, like a, you know, a big part of the community, I guess. Yeah. You know. Chef Tim just got an email this morning from the Hub, the Senior Center, um, and they were looking for help. Yeah. Yeah, people sure. are always looking for help. I mean, it's amazing. And especially now, since the economy's booming, there's even more demand for because people are going to other places to get jobs. So there's a lot of places to get. And the college, the college, the food service at the college is another place that we work with to try to put students in. The more they, they can work in the real world, the better off they'll be. Cool. Would you mind if I, if I used your quote, Chef Tim? Sure, go ahead. Cool, awesome, thank you. So yeah, I mean, we just, we try to get our kids out there in the industry because a lot of times the, the incoming students are, well, I don't want to be on the food network. You know, they see it as this glorified thing that the Food Network is both good and bad because it really helped promote chefs to where it was considered to be a respectable job instead of just, you know, that's, you know they use a cook. Now chefs are recognized as, you know, they're famous, Wolfgang Puck and all of that. So Food Network has helped that, but it also gets people who cook at home and then they're like, well, I can be a chef. And then they get here and realize that, well, cooking's a little bit harder than the way it's portrayed on the Food Network. So um, we don't have a lot, but we have a few people that come in and go, no, this is not for me. 
Um, I thought it was, I just want to go back home and cook food. Um, and try to encourage them, well, finish out the program and then you'll be an even better home cook or wherever you want to do. Open a food truck, whatever you want to do. So um, it's an interest, interesting mix of people that we get. But, uh, they all want to be cooks when they get there. And then depending on how hard they have to work in the kitchen. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, it's not easy work to be a chef. So, well, and first you have to be a cook to be able to climb the ranks to become a chef. You know, I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, and I didn't always call myself a chef. So, um, it's a long path yeah. to get to be a chef. It's interesting though that you mentioned like the the food trucks, and I guess it kind of shows that there's like there's not necessarily like one way to be you know you know to, to serve food. You know, there's there's multiple different like outlets for these students to kind of you know figure out what what would be best for them. You know, like some might be more about you know operating in you know your standard uh, restaurant. Some might you know want to work in a food truck. You know. Yeah, for um, sure. I mean. Um, I tell a lot of kids to watch the uh, show Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives because you see these and they go to Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, but yet the food that they make, the guy, some of those people have went to the same school that I went to, and they're just doing their own food at, at their own pace in their own way, you know, so it's, you can take your classical culinary training and do whatever you want with it, you know, you don't have to just go be a line cook somewhere. Don't say that that's where you usually end up, but uh, you can go do whatever you want with it, you know, run a food truck. I mean, that's just, there's so much good food out there now, it's not even funny. Especially with, I mean, Sheridan's, when I first came back here, there were no food trucks, no food trailers, no nothing. It was, you know, now they're everywhere. Yeah. And you kind of, you kind of mentioned that earlier with, you know, uh, you saying that whenever you were here, it was like the food scene wasn't really all that, you know, all that diverse. It was just meat and potatoes. And now it's really grown. Like, what are what are some of the things that you've noticed, uh, you know, in the food scene in Sheridan? That's kind of well, sushi. <laughs> you know, sushi's a big one that, you know, I honestly didn't. When I first came back, I never thought I'd see a sushi restaurant in this town. Um, so that's a big one. They, they, increase in the amount of seafood you can get um, locally is, is increased greatly. Um, so and it's just people are getting used to getting better food um, and not you know, fast food. They, they want to go get some really nice comfort food. Um, and I think with our economy on the uptick that um, they have that excess income to be able to go do that. And that's been a trend in the in the industry to where people are eating out more often than they are at home. So you know, there's just an endless boom in the, the hospitality culinary field right now. So. Cool. Now, I, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, um, but, you know, is the reason why there's, you know, better food around, is that is that just a testament to, you know, a better supply chain these days or, or you know, like a, a more efficient supply chain, you know, quicker transportation, like, you know, what, uh... Well, I think that part of the reasons the food purveyors around here are carrying more stuff, uh, can get you more stuff here in a, in a fairly good amount of time, I mean, not, not a long time, but they can get here fairly quickly but also the demands there for it now. And that's why they um, they carry more items because that's what people want. That's what restaurants are selling to the public. So when Cisco or food services or US Foods sees that demand, then they bring more product in. So that just helps us as chefs to have easier access to food. Yeah. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's that's cool that the uh, the demand for it is kind of uh, spiked. I mean, that's that's not what I would have guessed. But it's, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, the, uh, it's not like so a, a huge spike, but it's the demand is there because I can see when I go to do my ordering, uh, 
pull up something that I want and hey they didn't used to carry it but now they do yeah so it just it's it always fluctuates of you know where that demands at maybe they don't carry that anymore but you can get it in two days so that that helps I wonder I wonder if you know part of it's also because like people are, uh, are are traveling more and maybe you know getting exposed to you know different types of foods and so maybe that kind of I would like to think that I'd like to think that people are traveling um, and I hope that they do that because uh, I mean, uh, people need to expose themselves to different food and different cultures uh, to know you know what they want with things I mean to, we just stuck with steak and potatoes. And I know I love steak and potatoes, but you know I love to go get something you know different, something that you don't normally see. Yeah. So I like to travel and try new foods all the time, as much as I can. So. Cool. Now you you kind of mentioned a little while ago about uh, you know hospitality. Uh, management and whatnot, and uh, I know that I know that the two programs work very closely together. Can you tell me a little bit about that relationship? Because I, I still don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, yeah, we have a full-time hospitality program here, um, where their classes are up on the campus. Uh, but they come down. Our instructor uh, Ross Lynn um, comes down on Thursdays and Fridays when we're open to the public. Um, his students will be our uh, front of the house servers. Um, so, and a lot of times those servers are also culinary students. So they're seeing the front of the house and the back of the house. And to eventually become a chef, you have to know the front of the house and the back of the house. You have to know how a point of sale system works, the computer ordering uh, system that we have. Um, so they're intertwined. And there's no way you can have hospitality without culinary. Well, you can have hospitality without culinary, but um, we need hospitality to um, be our front of the house representatives. Um, you know, they need to do bar and beverage and all those type of things, and know the whole like how to run a front desk of a hotel and things like that. So, we're pretty much intertwined with the hospitality industry. And I guess in restaurants where there is kind of a disconnect between, you know, the, the front end side and the back end side, I guess it's, it's probably a little bit more chaotic in those restaurants and probably not yeah. as smooth. And it, it, I think it really helps when servers have experience in the kitchen. So and when culinary people have experience in the front of the house because then they can be uh, more on the same page and understand what's happening on both sides of the wall, if you will, uh, between the customer and the kitchen. And, um, it just helps, I think, things run better when people are cross-trained and all those. And that's what we try to do here, to get them so that they understand what's happening in the front of the house. There's a lot of times there can be some infighting between those two things, but um, we try to keep that to a minimum here really helps when they know both sides. Yeah. Now do you do you have any students who, you know, either want to or already have opened up their, their own restaurant in, in town or in the area or elsewhere? We have some uh, people who do baking, right? Is that the only ones we have is baking? Baking, you've got some students that run on a food truck too. Oh yeah, they have a food truck Ooh. out of Wheatland, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, one of our students makes cakes and that type of stuff out of Buffalo. Uh, we have one girl, she's got a cheesecake thing here going on in Sheridan. Um, and then there's another lady who bakes cakes. Um, but most of our other, I mean, when our cooks go out there, they're going to have to spend some time in a restaurant before they have, I mean, you still got to learn how to read a P&L statement profit and loss statement, and, you know, understand the business aspect of the side of business before um, you can open your own place. And you've got to put in some time to get to that point. So it'll be coming, I'm sure. 
we did have we had one guy who had his own company. Um, he was making um, all gluten free stuff, doing raisins and uh, roasted uh, chickpeas with different flavorings on them and stuff. And he actually had it in boxes and a manufacturing process down. So. Um, our students go as far as their motivation takes them. So we try to motivate them as much as we can here. Um, and then off they go. So they can go as far as they want to. Cool. Now the, the woman who does the, the cheesecake stuff, is that Cheesecake Squared or is it uh, or is it another? Uh, I believe, yeah. Place? She's right okay. on Coffee and Avenue by Ridley's. Cool. Yeah. Page. Ashford? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's all I have, I think. Did, did you want to add anything? I can give you a little tour of the place. That'd be great. Show you how that how awesome. everything goes down.